Natural deodorant is a perfect example of personal health versus environmental health and how they're often lumped together as one. So if you look up natural deodorant online, you're bound to find something about a detox period. Yes. (laughs) Oh, you've heard of this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Basically, in my opinion, it's some health hooey, Mm -hmm. but maybe other people will disagree with me. So the super popular natural deodorant brand Native has a blog post devoted to this detox period. It says the detox period refers to when your body is releasing any built up bacteria or waste from your armpit area, (laughs) and it can occur during the first weeks of transitioning to an aluminum free deodorant. During this time, some people do experience more odor and sweat than what they're used to. It's only supposed to last, this is end quote, it's only supposed to last two to four weeks and then the natural deodorant will get more effective. And my question is, has anyone saying this actually tried it? Because like I've been using natural deodorant for four months and it, I still smell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still smelly, so I call BS on this detox period. Yeah, I think that's green hooey. I don't know if there's medical hooey. Yeah, health hooey is what I... Health hooey. Yeah. However, there is one easy trick to get natural deodorant to actually work and pretty valid environmental reasons for wanting to try it. So today, we're going to learn if native deodorant is the right way to go or if there are better and cheaper options out there. Welcome to Greening Up My Act. Oh boy. Oh boy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, stinky (laughs) armpits. Okay, I just my hackles go up whenever something medical says detox. Oh yeah. Because Big time. Huge. I, this is a thing like medical practitioners will tell you over and over again, you don't need to quote unquote do a detox because your liver and your kidneys do that. They detox. Right. And if they're not that's functioning, that's a problem. Yeah. Right. I, the best way to detox, quit drinking alcohol or, you know, eating junk food and your body will naturally, you don't need to like drink lemonade Juice. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Your body will naturally cleanse itself. That's what it's for. It makes sense. And apparently your armpits naturally cleanse themselves. (laughs) I I don't know. I don't know about that. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. There's there's yeah, we're we're gonna check it out. Okay, you're gonna okay debunk it for me, baby. (laughs) Yeah. So, well, my armpit my personal armpits are debunking it as we speak. So I I will say I have not had a good experience with natural deodorant. Okay. Most people haven't, I think. I might have a trick for you. So Okay. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Let's first chat about my sources. Cool. Fast. I use Fast Company on plastic waste from deodorant. Mm-hmm. And The Guardian talks about – I just really quickly use them on paper versus plastic energy usage. And <laughs> – We get in – I wanted to get into the health side of things because it's so funny to me. I feel like you can't not. I feel like you you can't. You really can't not. Yeah. And the American Cancer Society talks about antiperspirant. Uh, I used the Environmental Working Group for product ratings. They rate tons of products and we use them all the time. They also had a video on phthalates. Phthalates. (laughs) Phthalates. Yeah, I always say it like Daffy Duck or something. Phthalates. Yeah, phthalates. Anyway, they explain what the heck those are. Okay. The New York Times had an article, Are Natural Deodorants Really Better for You? Great article. Love the New York Times. Yeah, Yeah, well. Sometimes. 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 Unless they're being bougie, but it's fine. Um, (laughs) And then I use Native's brand blog. I also looked at TerraCycle on recycling deodorant containers. And I got some DIY deodorant recipes from Tree Hugger. DIY, I'm excited about that. Yeah. So, what is it? Natural deodorant. First off, natural is a green hooey term because it's unregulated. Anyone can say it. I can make a nonstick pan and call it a natural pan. Right. Like a Teflon pan and be like, this is natural. And nobody would stop me. 
So they might try, but yeah, uh, they can't legally. They can't. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. I might be like, "There's no way that's natural." But no, what does natural yeah, mean, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, so many da- natural deodorants. Their marketing is kind of out of this world. They love to use natural, clean, safe. Uh, a lot of them are paraben free, aluminum free, phthalate free. <laughs> Phthalate free. I feel like we need to have Daffy Duck saying (laughs) phthalates. Vegan, cruelty free, all of the above. So four months ago, I just really wanted to test it and I wanted to give myself some runway and I'm glad I did. Uh, So I tried one called Purely Great Cream Deodorant. Purely Great. It sounds very nice. Purely Great. We will chat about it a little bit in more detail later, but I also really wanted to look into Native because Native Deodorant, if you've ever listened to a podcast that's sponsored, you've probably heard an ad for Native Deodorant. And it's, you know, it's one of these aluminum-free, phthalate-free, paraben-free. And the main purpose of this deodorant is to reduce the number of bad chemicals, quote unquote. So on the website- Bad chemicals. Okay. I like that. Uh Uh-huh. Bad chemicals. Bad, so bad. Uh, So on their website, they say what began as a curiosity about aluminum turned into a mission to make clean deodorant that could go head-to-head or pit-to-pit with (laughs) antiperspirants. Okay. So I say, I think like natural deodorant doesn't necessarily have an environmental focus as far as like these brands aren't... uh, they don't say, okay, sustainability is our number one focus. They're really saying these chemicals in our body is our number one focus, but it's considered a very eco-conscious, hippy-dippy thing to I th- do. I think this, we keep coming up against this because when I was we talking do. about, I, I don't, f- I feel like you, they're very hard lines to draw. They like are. It, it's blurred very, it's. It's blurred in the yeah. way we talk about it, but I don't think it's accurate. Really I don't know. I I agree with you. I feel like I don't. It's, I, it's very hard, hard to explain. It's yeah. very hard. Yeah. I mean, they they dovetail, mm-hmm. but are they separable? Yes, I think they are separable. Yeah, because usually think, and not always. Obviously, right? Like forever. Right. Like, like we're yeah. talking about like Windex, right? Like one of the reasons cleaners are so scary is because of the health effects they have on people. Uh huh. But also how they're produced, you know, I, I feel like they those things tend to go hand in hand. Like things that are produced in these like mass factories with without concern for the environment also tend to have no concern. I mean, human beings are part of the environment, you know. Right. Human health is part of the environment. I mean, that's why it's so important to have clean air for us. I mean, not just for the whole planet, but for us specifically, human beings need to breathe clean air. So yes. you can't remove the human health aspect in that sense. Right. But they're not necessarily, yeah, one-to-one. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of times, well, I'll get into it. So like this native deodorant doesn't necessarily help the environment, even though I think a lot of people think like, oh, it's helping me, therefore helping the earth. And it's like, we need to think a little bit more nuanced about this, but we'll get into yeah. the details. It's very tricky, though. Does it work? Natural deodorant. Does it work? I think you probably have your opinions. So this is interesting because according to the New York Times article, there are no rigorous and reliable studies that look at how well natural deodorant works. Thank you. Okay. I didn't think so. Yeah, it's never been studied. In a rigorous way, in right. a way that we can actually, you know, accept. But antiperspirant, which is sort of the devil um, among a lot of natural deodorant, pro, pro-natural pro deodorant movement, um, antiperspirant, aluminum, those are sort of like the evil chemicals along with some other stuff. But that's a big one. Like Native was started as sort of like a aluminum-free experiment, I guess. Right. Antiperspirant is not in natural deodorants, but it can stop bacteria from growing. So bacteria love water and sweat, aka an armpit. So without it, you're probably going to smell worse. Hmm. 
And that's just how it works. So without antiperspirant, you're probably going to smell worse. Oh boy. From time okay. to time. <laughs> not always. From time to time, I will say. For me, it's not it's not like I, I don't smell bad right now. Oh no. Okay. There are okay. ways to alleviate the smell but does it work as well as my secret that's still in my freaking medicine cabinet that i haven't pulled out for four months because i'm just so determined no right 100 no. percent, absolutely not this is where i tell you the trick so okay in my case natural deodorant does work if i shower every day which to be f- tr- honest i don't <laughs> okay yeah a lot of people do, but I, I know. don't. I don't. I work okay. from home. I don't have time for that. Right? Like, I got a kid. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so if you shower every day or wash, like actually physically wash your armpits with water and soap. Okay. So a horse shower. I hate to call it that. I'm sorry. Oh, That's God. very, yeah. <laughs> a horse bath. We can call it maybe a sponge bath. Okay. A sponge yeah. bath. Yeah, 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 yeah. A sink but, bath. Yeah, but the problem is, so you wash your pits with water and soap and then you dry them, but like you got to wash them kind of with something or at least have to pat them off with something. And that something is usually a towel and it will smell like your sweat. Yes. There's no way around that. Okay. And sometimes I kind of feel like I'm just wiping my sweat around, like the smelly bacteria sweat. So that is an issue. But if you do actually wash them, wash your pits well, and then you dry them and then you apply this stuff, it works. Really? Yes, it actually does. And I'm not going to say it lasts 100% as long as the secret that I have because no, but it actually surprisingly works. Okay. I have not found that to be true. You Even if you're clean? Even if I shower every day. Yeah. And you, your pits are clean and dry? Yeah. I stink at the end of the day. So that's the other problem with this. It's like everybody is different. Yeah, so. well, that's th- I think and there's also so much that goes into like th- like if if I drink more coffee, I smell different. If I eat onions, I smell yeah. different. I mean, there's I'm so sick, much I'm like, "Oh god." Yeah. If I was when I was pregnant, oh my god. Just that was this a whole well, other can If of I'm worms. ovulating, I stink. Yeah, I could totally see that. Yeah. So yeah. So the thing is, I have not like people on the internet assured me stop smelling over time because my pores are no longer clogged and all the toxins were really sure like, that just hasn't happened. Yeah. So like that detox period is a load of hooey, but it is kind of working. For okay. Me. So better than because I've just used it sort of haphazardly in the past. Use it for like I don't know off and like, on. And yeah. It doesn't work for crap. And then once I discovered this whole like washing my pits situation, then it has helped a lot. So okay. it's really just that bacteria that smells and that's what you got to get rid that's, of. And that's okay. So I have a trick that my friend Elisa told me. Okay. Um, and she's like, yeah, just use glycolic acid. <gasps> you mentioned this. Yes. And, and it I actually don't even know what that is. did work. So glycolic acid you can get it like Neutrogena sells it. It's something people use on their faces. I actually was using it on my face too. Um, but you can just buy it from like CVS, Walgreens, whatever. And you just put like a drop, rub it huh. into your armpit and it kills the bacteria. And then the next day you use the deodorant and it's fine. But the thing was I kept having to redo it. So at least once a week I'd have to use the glycolic acid on my armpits. Oh, well, once a week's not bad. I'm no, over here I mean, scrubbing but, my pits every day. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> It I was, it would be that. like, I do it overnight. Yeah. Or like after I shower, I put it on. But then I just was like, well, why am I using the deodorant at all? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. I just used the glycolic acid. Oh, that's so interesting. I might, I might have to try that. Yeah. And especially if it's only a drop because I'm like, well, you might as well just buy deodorant at that point. But if it's mm-hmm. only a well, drop. Then I'm yeah. Like, but it worked. I mean, it just worked. Mm-hmm. I mean, so does secret for me. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> There are other reasons. Other reasons, people. We're going to get into Okay, okay. Talk me out of my secret addiction. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is it easy to use? Natural deodorant de- really depends. So most of the popular ones like Native are the- exactly the same as a deodorant tube. Currently, Native also makes a cardboard one. We're going to get into this. And it's similar, but you do have to push – push it up with your finger instead of spinning it but i think it's from what i read i think it's very similar 
Mine is a cream, so it's slightly harder, but all I do is like use my finger. I Mm -hmm. mix it up a little bit, take like a little pea-sized portion and wipe it on my pits. Okay. Minus, this is always after washing myself. That's the biggest pain in the ass. (laughs) Some days I'm like, I'd rather Being clean is hard. (laughs) It is. I'm like, some days I'm just like, I'd rather just be smelly. I work from home, right? Yeah, who cares? Live I'm in that doing musk. all of this for you so you yes. don't have to, people. For the listeners who have to smell us. Yes, okay. <laughs> so that has actually stopped me a couple of times. I've been like, ugh, I don't feel like it. I'm just not going to bother. And then I just you know, I just kind of smell that day. But eh, it is what it is. <laughs> is it actually eco-friendly? So this was a very fascinating look into things because, like I said, I had – there's two sides of this. So there's the environmental side of things and the health side of things. And I had to, like we mentioned, look into the health side of things because it's so fascinating. Yeah. Um, first, the em- environmental side of things. So deodorant containers create 15 million pounds of plastic waste each year. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is like the toothpaste. It is. Actually, I think toothpaste was worse because yeah. deodorant kind of lasts longer, but which is funny. I mean, yeah, I guess we're not using like, you know, you're not using a toothpaste. Uh, okay. It's different quantities, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, yeah, deodorant's not like liquid usually. So it depends. Usually. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as mentioned in the toothpaste episode, each container will take between 20 and 500 years to decompose. And like, if it takes 20 years, that means it's probably in the ocean. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. That's like your best bet as far as like decomposition time, I would think, in salt water. And it won't ever disappear. It's going to become a microplastics. And so, yeah, like all of that is just unavoidable if you use regular deodorant for the most part. I will come, I will mention some other options. So, most native deodorants come in the standard plastic deodorant containers and they the company addresses this and they say plastic doesn't make perfect and we're doing our part to help reducing our environmental impact is nuanced difficult and important work and while we can't promise to get it right every time we can promise to be upfront and honest about our efforts so i appreciate okay. that mm-hmm. um i appreciate the honesty But then uh, this is where I was talking about health versus environment. Okay. Later in the website, I found them a quote from Native saying, Native deodorant is good for your body and good for the planet. Wow. That's quite a claim. Okay. Good for the planet. (laughs) What? How? Excuse me? No. No product is good for the planet. No. So there's that. Wow. So yeah, it's like all of this is so convoluted that it's like really frustrating. So. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. It's very annoying. So. You can't usually recycle deodorant tubes because they're made of a bunch of different types of plastic. Yeah, I was going to say, there's like a lot of components in there. Yes. Um, You can recycle them through TerraCycle. So TerraCycle and Toms of Maine actually has a program. We talked a little bit about TerraCycle in our Ridwell episode, but it's basically like a program that you sign up for. This one is free. And from what I understand, you ship them your trash basically oh okay and then they will recycle it for you they have you know these different programs have different things that you send in per program so toms of maine i guess just agreed to work together with TerraCycle, and they recycle actually a bunch of different types of um personal care products like toothbrushes um toothpaste all this other stuff okay so it is free but there might be a wait list um of course yeah. And we all pl- want to put our waste in yeah, something. Yes. But plus, listen to our plastic recycling episode and you'll understand that we ain't going to recycle our way out of this. No. So even if 
you recycle every single deodorant, whatever, tube, it's still a scam. You can recycle plastic one to three times maximum. So so depressing. Yeah. Yeah. On the other hand, some native scents now come in cardboard tubes hmm. and they look really similar from what I could tell. And the website says that using these can help eliminate 169 tons of landfill waste each year. Okay. Don't know where they get that statistic. I mean, that's, yeah, I'd like to know. Sure. <laughs> but it's good for the earth, native, so I don't understand. Right. Why. It's so good for the planet. <sighs> bothers me so however i remember we have talked about this off and on and it's like one of those facts that's very hard to wrap your brain around because you don't want to believe it but basically the long story or the short wait long long story short okay (laughs) is that paper and cardboard according to the guardian embody far more greenhouse gases than their plastic equivalents when you consider the lifetime of the packaging. What? We talked about this with like um, reusable stuff, I think. I can't remember what the episode was, but it was basically like the canvas bag versus a paper bag. Right. Or sorry, a plastic bag. Right. And the plastic bag uses like zero energy to create. It just creates all of this waste. Right. So it's like we're kind of talking about like land pollution versus air pollution. Okay. Slash like the trade offs. Yeah, yeah. That's what it feels like. And that's really frustrating. Or the upfront versus the back end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It really, yeah. It's like short term versus long term. Although climate change is quite long term too. But yeah. So that sucks. Oh, God. There's, <laughs> I know, the answer is. is- <laughs> Live like a caveman and don't wear deodorant. Like, oh, obviously, that's truly, the only just be Don't brush your teeth. Don't. Smell like <sighs> me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, that's something to think about or not think about if you don't want to think about it. But... I don't want to think about it. Okay. But I, I will. For... The good news is I have a solution at <gasps> the end. Okay. It does require you to use natural deodorant. But anyway. Um... Oh, God. <laughs> Do I have to? Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not that bad. Hey, Greening Up My Act listeners. Are you concerned about global climate change? Look no further. Introducing the Climate Conscious Podcast, hosted by the sustainability consultant Derval Barzi. It's your go-to resource for all things climate and sustainability, and we think you should give it a listen. The Climate Conscious Podcast covers a wide range of topics, from eco-friendly lifestyle tips, which we all love, to sustainable energy, and even discussions on environmental justice and gender equity. Discover the actionable steps you can take to make a difference. The Climate Conscious Podcast, where knowledge meets action. Subscribe now on your favorite podcast platform. Some, like Bite, Bite I talked about in the toothpaste tablets episode. Yeah. They are, as you mentioned, launching into a consumerist massive amount of brand or massive amount of products so now they have yeah yes so now they have uh deodorant and they're making refillable containers and then you can get mailed the refill dove also has a real refillable option which is really interesting have you ever heard of this no first off dove deodorant sucks but that's fine um (laughs) but yeah, I never heard of this. It's not really – I don't really go on the, looking on the shelves, so maybe it's on the shelves and I just don't see it. But the ratings are all over the place for this product. <laughs> like uh, Dove's, Dove's mom gives it five stars, but a non-paid right. yes. character gives Everybody it. Everybody said – a lot of people say it breaks off. So it's sort of like, well, well shit. <laughs> yeah, okay. So other refillable options that tried to be a thing – Secret tried it, but – maybe two years ago but then pulled it from the shelves within i think a year oh wow i wonder why because it just wasn't wasn't selling selling. i don't know is there no demand for this because that would be nice if there was because then you could just like have the one plastic container yeah and just reuse it but i i don't know i don't use deodorant that often i mean i don't i don't go through it like i just don't go through it like i'll i'll have i feel like i have deodorant for a year yeah it does last a long time. 
I, I mean, I, it depends on your body, right? Like I have friends who don't use it ever and they don't ever smell. And then I have other people I know, like Joe has to use it every single day or he's smelly. So yeah, yeah, it just, it just depends. But I guess in that way it's different than toothpaste because most people are using that. I use it twice a day. day. Yeah. Yeah. I use a nominal amount of toothpaste. Yeah. But deodorant. Yeah. Yeah. So the health side of things. So we talked about the environmental side of things. Now let's talk about the health side of things. Okay. So antiperspirant. I love this. So have you heard that antiperspirant is linked to breast cancer? I heard – okay, I don't want to spoil it. But I did hear that aluminum was linked to breast cancer and then they said it wasn't. Okay. So aluminum is – is this right? Is aluminum? I want to say that aluminum is the antiperspirant. Component. Yeah, there's something. Yes, or yeah. I mean, I think maybe it was linked to Alzheimer's too, or something. Right. Like, people have things. wild theories. Yeah, all these things. So the it's a rumor, and okay. the New York Times says that it started in an email chain. The rumor that antiperspirant causes cancer started in an email chain oh, in the 1990s. Wow, email in the 90s. You know how yes, like big of a deal chains. that is? Do you remember those chains? Yes. You send this to 17 people and you'll get lucky to tonight or something. Yeah. Exactly. It's now it's Facebook. Like I can't believe I haven't thought about those things in so long. I can't no. believe those existed. If you don't do this, you're going to break your leg. I don't know what mm-hmm. they said, but There's still like TikTok has it now. Like like and share this and you will find love. Like ah, it's it's silly. Same shit, yeah. It's all the same. Yeah. The same shit, different era. Yep. In sim- on a similar note, the American Cancer Society shows very limited studies on the link on any link between antiperspirant use and breast cancer. Okay, so is that because they haven't studied it? I mean, I don't know how you because that's the thing. <sighs> no, actually, I think it's that there are no all of these studies have been done, and there's nothing in any of these studies to show that there's a link. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like with essential oils where they just haven't done the studies. It's just No, I don't think so. Okay. They were very clear. They're like, this isn't a thing that we can tell. But we still believe it. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Like it's still well, in the I back actually, of my head that every yeah, time I use secret but, deodorant, I'm gonna like okay. One of the reasons that's one of the reasons I wanted to try natural deodorant, to be honest. Yeah. So yeah, my, my mother had breast cancer. So it's like, oh. Right. I can avoid and, it. Yeah. My aunt did too. So um so versus – so I wanted to look up like, okay, I, what's one antiperspirant deodorant? What does the environmental working group think of this? So like okay. secret antiperspirant plus deodorant in – get this – calm birch water scent. <laughs> Did I – okay, sorry to go off topic here, but no, one of my favorite – Twitter threads in the history of Twitter threads. I'm not even on Twitter, but when this gets reposted, I share it wherever I can. Is um, the levels of abstraction of Yankee Candle scents? Oh my god! I should so similar. I'll I'll send it to you, but yeah, it's like, what is what is that scent? Because it'll be like, like level one is it's actually tied to an actual scent, like maple syrup. Okay, Mm -hmm. that's a scent, but then it'll be like level two level of abstraction is like. Autumn breeze. It's like mm-hmm. autumn breeze is an actual thing, but that's like an ephemeral quality of, you know, like a shared experience. And it goes all the way to like, like summer calm dreams. Yeah. 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 What does calming birch water smell like? <laughs> like what level of abstraction is that? I think that's a level three where it's like, yeah, yeah. it's tied to something, but it's like a, an experience we have. You know, anyway. I love that so much. Yeah. I'll have to share that with you. But anyway. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Yeah, so the Environmental Working Group gives this calm birchwater scent deodorant a five out of ten. Ten is the worst. Wow. Okay. And it says it has a low risk of cancer and reproductive slash developmental toxicity. Okay. The biggest concern about any of it is the fragrance. Obviously. Fragrance is the parfum because they can put whatever they want in it. Yes, because companies use the word fragrance to mask a lot of shit. Yeah. And some of it actually is not very good for us. Right. We don't. But we don't know. We we don't don't know. know. Yeah. Yeah. 
the thing is not all companies use um phthalates are one of the things that's in fragrance phthalates Phthalates. (laughs) um but not all the time so that's the hard thing um and the funny thing is even the unscented version of this secret antiperspirant has a masking fragrance that's okay. a concern. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're unscented. What are you doing? What? It's sort of like the un- – like back in the day, like unscented laundry detergent actually had like clean breeze scent. You're yeah. Like, Wait a minute. Like, Wait a minute. Hang on a second. Yeah. Um, As far as aluminum goes, there's no evidence that it can be absorbed into the skin and increase breast cancer risk. Interesting. Okay. According to Harold, this is all from the New York Times article. According to Harold Burstein, a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, he says, the well done human studies have never really suggested this. And he says only a trivial amount of aluminum can be absorbed through the skin. We're probably going to get so much heat for this because people Uh, people are going to be like, it's a conspiracy. It causes autism. Well, yeah. I mean, that's like the whole thing. But as far as I just like to look at the studies that have been done. And I'm not saying that there aren't people out there who – that there aren't government cover-ups because there certainly are. But I don't know. It was just like overwhelming the amount of information that I was like, oh, this is the consensus and this is not what we all think. Right. So it's just like science versus people's thinking is so different. Um, A lot of – Deodorants, natural deodorants will say that they're good for your microbiome, which is like a whole thing. Yeah. They claim to promote the growth of good bacteria in your armpits, but there's no real evidence of this. On Native's website, there was an FAQ that asked, are these deodorants really better for me? And I actually appreciated their response because it says, our stance is that people should have options if you are concerned about concerned about aluminum or phthalates we have an option that actually works and helps you feel good about what you're putting in your body okay and i will say some secret and old spice spray on deodorants were recently pulled for having benzene in them which is a potentially cancer causing chemical so maybe avoid the spray ones because i think think that's that's common and thing yeah spray that seems to be like a common element in spray things yes Yes. Okay. And yeah, we're going to talk about dry shampoo and benzene might be. Part of that. <laughs> I think that's mine too. I'm like, it is. Don't tell me. It's the only thing I live off of coffee and dry shampoo. Well, you'll have to get a re- or like a sustainable version and see if it works. I'm so curious because um, I need a better wow. one. I have DIY options. Oh, there you go. All mm-hmm. right. So, as mentioned, the worst ingredient is fragrance so really anytime there's fra- any kind of smell it can be can be not always like said um it can contain phthalates and those help the smell linger on the skin that's what it does so oh. anytime that smell is gonna sticking around it probably has phthalates <laughs> yeah and these can be endocrine disrupting they can reduce sperm count they can mess with your hormones they may harm brains in unborn children lots of bad shit that is linked to these things um yeah. so native doesn't use phthalates they use cyclodextrin instead and i was like hmm, what's that mm-hmm. the ewg environmental working group says that that is a low risk chemical so okay. it seems like that's a good alternative. But yeah, I mean, all of, yeah, that is like the one thing about Native is everybody says that they're fra- the smell is so good. I've never tried it, but everybody's like, oh, I just die over the smell. I have liked, I mean, I've got it because like the perfume I wear or whatever is, um, you know, vanilla y and like, I don't want like a fresh cucumber scent or uh-huh. I ha- I hate powder. I hate baby powder smell. So like I wanted to use native because they have, they have great scents. They have like vanilla coconut. and I coconut. coconut one. Yeah. I tried the coconut vanilla and I really wanted it to work and it didn't. Ugh, bummer. You can send it to me. I'll try it. I threw it away years oh, no. ago. <laughs> no, it was, yeah. Years it was, ago. It's probably like hard. I know. I It was like, I used it in like 2016 or something. No, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Just, I was hoping. It's fine. 
I can also get mad. Um, <laughs> so that, not if you want to throw it away, you don't. Okay. Right, right, anyway. right. Well, that was kind of interesting because you know it's still fragrance, and all of them, most of them, there is an unscented option, which is considered the best option. As is far it as, legitimately uh, unscented? I guess I think it yeah. is. Yeah. Okay. I because EWG gives it like a one, like the best possible score. The opposite um, of how we do it, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's funny. Um, and their product rating, like their cleaning product rating, is also the opposite. So it's kind of confusing. But yeah, you're like what? Yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So is this is this actually eco friendly or is it just really good marketing? Yes, it's really good marketing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, because if you think about it, what are the benefits? You get – the the benefit really is about the chemicals. If you're freaked out about aluminum, if you're freaked out about um, phthalates, which are actually worth freaking out about, right? Yeah, fair. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, I mean, that is the main benefit. And then you can get the cardboard option, which at least will decompose – Eventually, unless it's in a landfill, and then maybe 150, 200 years from now it will. Um, but again, cardboard might take more. So it's just really the only option here is to make your own. <laughs> Sorry. I'm into <laughs> Sorry it. Sorry about I'm into your it. luck. Okay. Yeah. It's just that, I mean, it's not the only option, right? Like you can do whatever the hell you want. You can go by secret all day, every day, but the best option is to make your own. I gave it a granola rating. So each episode, we give a granola rating of one to five granolas. Mm -hmm. One is soggy. Five is break your tooth off. And you want Mm -hmm. it. You want your granola to be crunchy, people. Seriously. Yeah. So for native deodorant specifically, I gave it a two, which is sticky. Wow. Okay. Because environmentally, it doesn't really help. You're not really doing much. Right. Right? It's still plastic. It's still – or, or it's, like not, it's not sustainably made. It's not like they're sustainably harvesting, you know, the scents that they're using or, you know. They don't get into how they get their products. I mean – I yeah, mean, they, they have it? like ingredient lists of every single thing that they used. And so in that way, but they don't tell us how how they're sourced or. Or or just even like the, how their factory, you know, reuses electricity or doesn't waste water. Or, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can do to be a more sustainable company. Yeah. So I will say, side. I don't think it's like the worst if there's nothing this compared to secret you're probably better off with this okay right just from a health standpoint from but even or even from a mass produced standpoint you think yes yeah i would think i don't know because it's like once native gets really big what's the difference it's huge i mean i was just looking at all of their scents they have like hundreds of scents they have a lot and they're and they're in they're in h-e-b i mean i can get them at the grocery store so yeah they're everywhere And yeah, like, so on their website, they'll go into uh, simple and effective ingredients. But all it really says, I mean, okay, they only talk about the actual ingredients and why they use them. They don't really talk about where they get them from. I mean, the truth is they're using, like, fewer things, probably. Tapioca starch, shea butter, coconut oil, baking soda, all of these things. It just depends, right? Yeah. Like it just yeah. depends. Like how are you harvesting the shea butter? Like yeah, yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention how much it costs. That's the other. Oh thing. yes, that's the other thing. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah, this is the thing that gets me. Yes, that's why I gave it a sticky because native is thirteen dollars per oh. bar, and this is to their credit, even the plastic free one. So the cardboard one is the same price, okay, which I appreciated. Nice. Yeah. My the one that I tried, purely great cream deodorant, is eleven dollars and twenty four cents. Okay. On Amazon, and it lasted me about four months, which I think probably native would too for most people. Um, so mine was about the same price. A little bit. I'm cheaper. trying to remember. My sister tried to get me hooked on a brand. 
Oh, there's so many. There are so many out there. And it still came in like a plastic tube. I'm going to look it up. Keep going. Yeah. And I want to say when I was in college, I tried like a crystal and that didn't work for shit. Oh, oh, I remember that brand. Yes. Right? That was a very hippy dippy thing I tried. And I, again, I didn't know how to use it. I just sort of smeared it on. and But it yeah. was a, just a rock that was smearing on my armpits and it did not help the smell. Um, But then I looked up one bar of regular secret. costs about six bucks. Yeah, so it's like half it. the price. Yeah. yeah, so it's less than half of the price. So, Oh, it was type A. Type A, it was, oh my God. 15 bucks plus five $6 shipping. Oh, boy. Yeah. So I didn't even look at their shipping. Oh, no. Well, native, you can get anywhere, really. Yeah, you can buy it. And yeah, I didn't like the flavors they had either. Sorry, Julia. Did not love your natural deodorant order. <laughs> well, it's a very personal thing. Yeah. So I would say recommendations like TLDR, just make your own. <laughs> okay. Just, tell us how to do that. How do I make my own? Try it. Okay. Yeah. So, like I said, I got this purely great cream deodorant. All it means is it was three things, and I just looked up on the ingredient label, and I just recreated it once I ran out. So, I put two teaspoons, and I'll I'll put a rest little recipe chapter in the um in the oh yeah 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 market chapter, mm -hmm. what, chapter markers so that when you're Later, you're like, shoot, I really want to try this natural deodorant, but I can't remember the recipe. You can just click on the recipe part. Yeah. So try two teaspoons baking soda, one half teaspoon cornstarch, which is weird to put on your deodorant or on your carpets, <laughs> and one half of a teaspoon of vegetable glycerin, which okay. we've yeah. talked about a little bit. I think you probably even know more than I do about it. It's used in a lot of moisturizers. Yeah. We use it to make slime sometimes. Okay. I love that you're just making slime, but. <laughs> <laughs> Hash House Harriers, baby. Oh, there you go. When we need slime, it's there. Yes. When we need, or it's kind of like a lube. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And it's sort of what a lot of people call like a more natural option. Um, if you find that baking soda irritates your skin, you can use apple cider vinegar, cornstarch, or witch hazel to replace the baking soda part. The baking soda does help with the smellies. Yeah, it's absorbent. I mean, you put it in your fridge to absorb smells. So, mm -hmm. But it does. I have heard it can cause a rash if you leave yeah. it on. Yeah. It hasn't for me yet, but um, I don't think it will. But you know, there's a lot of other options that you can try if it does for you. Glycolic acid. There you go. I might try this. Um, you can, oh, so what I did was I just used the original container from the Purely Great and oh. I just mixed it in M there. Put it in. And that's great. Yeah. So I got my little, little container and it, yeah, it works, works fine. Did and you add a scent to it or anything? It's just something. To I didn't. I don't trust those essential oils. Can that's I? right. You're <laughs> a lot heavier on it than I am. I'm like, I like lavender. And you're like, no. <laughs> no, ma'am. Not in this house. <laughs> That's why I get a headache when I walk down the cleaning aisle. It's true. You have no sense in it. Your house is just perfectly scentless. Well, it can't, I wouldn't say perfect because it certainly has trash in it still. Like the <sighs> trash isn't going to smell great. <laughs> that compost is nasty. Yeah, and there's no pumpkin candle to cover it up. So it's true. It just true. is what it is. Um, but it costs literal pennies and saves wow. a lot of plastic from the landfill. Okay. So, um, I'm also going to link more recipe options from Tree Hugger. They, okay. There are others that use like coconut oil, um, just tons of options. And that you sounds can, really soothing. Right? It does. And you can use uh, essential oils. I'm not going to, but you can. And yeah. a bunch of the Tree Hugger recipes have essential oils in them. So, okay. yeah, I mean, I made it the other day because I ran out and I was like, hey, this is fine. And it's working? Like, do you have to do your, your sink bath? It's the same. It's basically, okay. yeah, it's the same ingredients. So, yes. Okay. I don't do it every day, but when I don't do it, I do notice a little bit of a smell. So. Okay. I mean, there's also nothing wrong with I could also shower every day. I mean, that's a waste of water, <laughs> if you ask me. Exactly. I, I think, I mean, I, I, I know, like, bad hippie, but, like, we are obsessed, over-obsessed with cleaning to the point that, it like, the microbiome stuff 
I used a, a bacterial spray for a while and it actually did work. Um, but like we do rinse off all the good bacteria and, Mm -hmm. and like our skin needs, like showers are very dehydrating. Our skin needs rest and like it's okay not to shower every day. I know. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, it's fine. If I, there's a lot of benefits to showering. Like, you can feel good. But, like, you know, sometimes you need a little a little funk. Yeah, and your hair. At least if I wash my hair too much, it gets super dry. Yeah. So. And it can actually stimulate oil production to overwash. So. Yeah, I've heard that. That's why I never wash it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> it's just the slimp. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I am an advocate of it. I would advocate trying it because okay. I'm probably like now that I've done it for four months, I, I'm probably going to stick with it because it, honestly, I actually don't put it on every day and I don't know. Maybe somebody else could tell me if I smell worse than I do. But. <laughs> Let's ask your husband. Yes. I, I think there's there's also um, the, a trick about deodorant is you're supposed to put it on the night before. Okay. Um, I've heard because then it works overnight. Huh. So well, that, that would make sense because you're not yeah. like sweating and creating bacteria and stuff all night. Well, you are. <laughs> hmm. But I, I think after you shower, too, is a good time to put it on. I don't know. Yeah, I like A lot of people just put it on in the morning, and it's like, no, actually, it works better if you do it. I, mm-hmm. I learned that. If, if you do it overnight, it works better. Okay. I'll try that then. Yeah. I usually do it in the morning, so maybe yeah. it will help. Well, I've hung out with you, and you, you never stink. So. Oh, good. I don't know if I was using this at that point, but. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going Hi. to my friend's house, so I'll ask her, like, hey, do I smell that? Do I smell? Just, could you just sniff my pits? <laughs> Joe's probably like immune to it at this point he's like oh, yeah he's like i can't smell you that's <laughs> that's one of the things that the guy i'm seeing is very sensitive to smells oh so like he can smell if somebody has been on an elevator wearing like the slightest cologne he'll be like ah <laughs> oh interesting so like if i stink he can i bet yeah, i don't know he doesn't think i stink so far so that's a good sign yeah we are genetically compatible very good mm-hmm um yeah so that's all i got i mean yeah i think cool go for it like what what's it gonna cost you a couple teaspoons of baking soda and cornstarch right right? like you're probably not using it anyway (laughs) yeah my bake i hardly ever use my baking soda it's like i need to put it in my toothpaste i need it like i should put this baking soda to use oh man i use it for cleaning all the time i have it in like a little easy to grab jar i have the huge bag of it which is a bag fine but um still i have it in an easy to grab jar under my sink and i just sprinkle it in my sink to wash sprinkle it on really that's so smart yeah try it so it's so useful i love it it's my it's my spirit animal (laughs) (laughs) it's my spirit soda spirit soda spirit (laughs) cleanser (laughs) awesome okay well i'll give it a whirl yeah give it a shot you know what can it hurt? Wash with my Dr. Bronner soap and then perfect. Put on my and then you'll deodorant. be good smelling, probably. Yeah, probably the yeah the lavender oil in there. Mm-hmm. So try it. Cool. Well, thank you, thank you. This was a lot of great research, and I I'm glad we're talking about the line between products that are better for you and products that are better for the environment. Yes, because I think in this movement, a lot of people don't don't know that you. You have to separate those. It's so easy. It's so easy to just be like, oh, if it's good for me, it's got to yeah. be better for the earth. The cause, well, and oftentimes things that cause cancer are bad for the earth. But yeah, and that yeah, that's the that's what makes it difficult. Is like yeah. a lot of times, like Teflon, like I said, yeah, that's bad for everything. Yeah, but yeah, good for you, good for the environment is not a claim that I think. Yeah, good most. for you, good for the earth. I'm like, what kind of product can say it's good for the earth? Maybe that exists. Like a, no, (laughs) I don't think it does. I don't think we can say that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Because even, uh, I can't even think of anything. Nothing's good for the earth. I I don't know. Was planting trees? uh, Planting. That's not really, yeah, you're not going to, well, I guess you do buy trees. Okay, fine. You got me there. (laughs) My pollinator garden. Sure. There you go. Your pollinator garden is good for the earth. But it could be argued that the gas I used and the packaging and the blah, 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 blah. You're right. 
if human beings didn't exist, the earth would be different. But mm -hmm. we do exist. We so do. it's not Here it's not are. hypothetical. Yeah. Let's Here go into we what are. Yes. And we drive cars. Yes. But it is it is really it is it's interesting and very tricky because a lot of companies in their marketing conflate the two. Yeah. And it's frustrating. Yeah, for sure. Well, I appreciate your research, madam. Thank you, madam, <laughs> for listening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are we talking about next week? I was just I was just looking that up. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, yay. Less stinky and sweaty. I see what it is. Oh, what is it? You're talking about beauty counter. Makeup. Oh, yeah. Makeup. Okay. This one is... I think this is going to be a rabbit hole because, again, it's better for you is the issue mm -hmm. right so sustainably produce make i don't i don't even know if any makeup companies claim to be sustainable they're all just about how they don't cause you cancer so mm -hmm. but yeah there's some interesting stats i know that a, a woman that i knew in high school who never wore makeup she's like do you know the average woman eats like consumes inside of her body a certain amount of makeup over her lifetime it was like several pounds or something and it was like yikes <laughs> so it's you do like that fake statistic about spiders <laughs> well i think she she she's legit like yeah, no, she's just kidding but it was some something that was like yeah oh boy so interesting. i'm interested to look into if there is sustainable sustainably made and good for you and good for the environment mm -hmm. you know but I again, know like, nothing about Beauty Counter, but I did see something about them online. I was like, ooh, Kat's going to talk about them. Yeah. Well, probably now that we've talked about it, Google's going to give you all the ads. Oh, Lord. My phone is listening. Yep. Awesome. Very well, th cool. Thank you for listening, everyone who's listening. We appreciate you. Um, yes. And if you want to check us out on Instagram, we are, on, we are at, at Greening Up My Act. And yes. we like to keep you apprised of any cool stuff we Fine. yeah i'll huh? post we'll post that i just sent you the uh the link to the twitter thread about abstraction and yankee candle scent so. perfect i love it we could share it <laughs> it's a good one yes. <laughs> makes it sound like intellectuals <laughs> yeah sure okay <laughs> just kidding all, all right. right cool well have a good night you too talk to you soon okay bye bye